Dytoid piercings, pros, cons, advantages, disadvantages, five of each. Going to give it to you right now with pros and cons by a piercer, episode number 27. So stick around. For those that are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio, located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about this, I'm talking to you as an expert, as someone who has done this piercing numerous times and helped people through the healing process. First thing I want to talk about is uh, kind of a disclaimer. If you are easily offended by any discussion involving genital piercings, um, the male anatomy, especially the genitalia, this isn't the video for you. If you are under uh, the age in your particular part of the world where this would be appropriate, I would suggest that you also move on to something else. If you're looking for some type of sexual gratification, get all tingly and et cetera, this isn't the video for you. The whole purpose of this video is solely to educate people that are considering this video and possibly have their part their partners too, so they can get kind of an understanding of what the piercing is going to be and what it's going to involve as far as healing and et cetera, and any lifestyle changes and et cetera that may be involved. That out of the way, uh, what are didoid piercings? Uh, they're an older piercing. Uh, they were originally developed in the 1970s by Jim Ward at Gauntlet. Uh, the backstory that was made up by, I believe his name, for some reason I can't remember his last name, uh, Doug, who was his partner at the time at Gauntlet. Uh, supposedly, they, this piercing was created by those of the Jewish faith and heritage as a way to bring back some of the stimulation left uh, that, was, that was lost during circumcision. Like most of those things, it probably isn't historically correct. Uh, there's probably no connection whatsoever. But where it's located at is um, if you look at a penis, especially one that's cut or one with the foreskin can, uh, down, there's kind of a, a, a crown that goes around the upper area of the, uh, of the penis, of the glands on the underside. And they go through that, usually done with a curved barbell, um, they can be done with rings, but I don't generally suggest it. My experience, curb barbells heal faster and they're less promatic. Uh, they tend to, one of the reasons that these piercings are a little uncommon is because they have a reputation for rejection in, I'll get into that later a little bit. Um, some people put, uh, have tried experimenting with partially or fully surface to surface pier or barbells, you know, the ones that are shaped like so. I'm not a big fan of them because unless you're exactly on, they really have no benefit. Uh, you have to, uh, the curved barbells seem to give a little bit more play, a little bit more uh, ability to uh, to kind of place it in the right place where it seems like it's going to work for the, for the client and also reduce kind of migration and allow a little extra room for swelling. Anyway, that's my philosophy on that. So let's get into the pros and cons, the reason you're here, right? Uh, number one. Number one pro, this piercing is going to increase or should increase sensation uh, stimulation during sexual activity for not only yourself or but your partner. Uh, most of the clients that I've, I've, I've done this piercing on and talked to them about it afterwards have stated that it does seem to do more for their partner, though they do like the feeling of the sensation and the bumping. Uh, Kind of, I don't know about this whole foreskin replacement stuff. I don't wear one, um, but this is a piercing that primarily seems to be more for the partner. Understand that any piercing, regardless of where it's at in your body, is exciting at first and then kind of loses sensation or excitement over time. Your biggest muscle is your brain. If you're, if you're excited by the idea of having this piercing or your partner is excited about having this piercing, it probably is going to add a lot more stimulation to the situation. Um, it's like I always say, genital piercings not sometimes don't improve it, but they don't make it worse. They just make it different. Number two, this piercing has a long history of healing. As I stated, this is a piercing that dates back to the 1970s. This is not a new or innovative new piercing. It's wild and crazy and wacky. This has been around for a long time. 
Uh, when you get this piercing done, you are following the footsteps of a lot of people that have done this piercing um, numerous times. Um, number three, can be done pretty much anywhere on the crown. Traditionally, they're done kind of towards the top, kind of offset to one side or the other. Um, they can, however, be done in groupings. I've done as many as four on one person. It depends on the anatomy. It depends on how pronounced the crown is. Um, and it, you know, that's basically it. Uh, you could probably, and you can place them either in dead center on the top. A lot of people like that one. Um, we can also do it off to the sides or et cetera. So you're kind of, it, it, it all depends on your anatomy, what can be done and what can be done, but they can be done in groupings and they usually are. Number four, can be done in groupings. I don't know why I didn't skip over that one. <laughs> Yes, as I mentioned earlier, they can be done in groupings. You can do multiple of this piercing. Um, it all depends on your anatomy. Kind of already explained that, now didn't I? Number five, this is a piercing that you can keep private. This is a piercing that if you work in an industry or um, you live in a conservative part of the world or what have you, you can have this piercing and no one needs to know that you have it unless you tell them or they're a sexual partner. Uh, if you live, this is like all genital piercings are easy to hide. Um, you know, your only real situation, if you kind of think about it, the only time other people see your, your general, um, private parts is when you're active with them sexually or maybe a bathroom situation occasionally or the gym and the shower. So if you, you can limit who knows you have it, it's not like a facial piercing where every time somebody sees you. They're going to know that you have your nostril pierced. Coming up next, right after the short break, we're going to be going into the pros. So stick around. Welcome back. Wasn't that lovely? Now we're going to get into the pros and disadvantages. Uh, number one, this piercing has a reputation and is prone to migration or rejection. It's my experience that usually it seems like when you do both sides, one side migrates, the other side peels perfectly. You need to know that going in. Um, a lot of this is anatomy specific. If you have a skilled piercer who knows their stuff, they're going to know whether or not when they look at your anatomy and kind of size it up, whether or not this piercing is going to work for you or whether or not you're going to be more prone to migration. Number two, for six months, you cannot exchange bodily fluids. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't have sex for six months. That just means you need to use some type of latex barrier. Uh, even um, after a piercing is healed, you're going to be more acceptable to STDs during intercourse or anything else. So you need to practice safe sex anytime you switch a partner, even after this piercing is healed. The concern is, is because you have a hard piece of metal in soft tissue that the general strenuous activity and rough activity that's usually associated with sexual activity, that you're going to cause a slight tear in the piercing. And then you're going to have an exchange of bacteria or a virus or something. And during the healing process, we have to be concerned about an infection. But after that, it could, it could be an STD virus that gets in there and then you have an STD which nobody wants one. Nobody runs around and goes, give me one. Number three, because of the type of jewelry that's usually used in this particular piercing, um, which is threaded balls, you do need to check them on a regular basis. They do have uh, sometimes a tendency to loosen up and because of where they're located at and the type of activity that's involved with it, they're more prone to this. And it's my experience that they usually fall off or you notice they've fallen off as soon as you sit on the toilet. And then they're in the bottom of the toilet and there's no way you're going to put that back in your body after where it's been. So it's really something you have to be diligent about checking those balls on a regular basis. Number four, this one comes up from time to time. Uh, maybe your partner is not going to find the pierce uncomfortable. Um, this might be a mental issue. This might be something just physical. Some people are worried about the jewelry falling off during intercourse and then ending up inside them, et cetera. So you might come across a situation where you have a partner that's like, no, you either take that out or we're not doing anything. So you need to be aware of that. If you're in a committed relationship, this is why I really strongly suggest that you sit down and you talk 
with your partner about this particular piercing or any genital piercing before you get it done. Because it's not common, but occasionally I'll get somebody that calls me up, yeah, so-and-so doesn't like it, I need to take it out. And that sucks because you went through the whole process of getting the piercing, doing the research, doing the work, and you're excited about this new piercing, and then your partner's like, no, nope, close for business. Number five, this piercing, like most genital piercings, because it's an area of the body that's full of a lot of, uh, is very full of blood, they can bleed anywhere from one to two days to five to seven days. You need to prepare for that. One of the most common ways you prepare for that and deal with it is by wearing some type of sanitary napkin or pad, not only to cut down the amount of bleeding you see in the area, but it also helps to cut down the amount of moisture, which cuts down the amount of bacteria um, when the piercings are at their uh, most more prone to infection, that initial couple days or couple weeks. Uh, also, it, kind of, it adds a little bit of cushioning, so it makes the piercing a little bit more comfortable during its most tender phase. So now with those out of the way, let's move on to my consultation. What I would tell you if you came in and asked for this particular piercing. First thing I'm gonna tell you is this piercing heals out an average of six to eight weeks. However, especially if you're sexually active, I'm gonna suggest that you give it at least three months um, and take care of it for a full three months, at least. During which time, I'm going to suggest that you do hot soaks of warm water and sea salt or clean with a sterile saline solution, preferably something that comes out of a can and specifically says sterile and doesn't have any food additives or any other garbage in it. Just pure saline for roughly about 10 minutes, twice daily and rinsing afterwards. Also, I'm going to suggest that at least once a day, you clean it with an antimicrobial germicidal soap the area, not the actual piercing, but the area, um, twice if you feel like you've contaminated the area. Cross-contamination prevention. Most of this common sense stuff. Wash your hands before you handle it. Try to handle it by the ends whenever possible. The only time you need any contact with the piercing is when you're cleaning it. Rest of the time, leave it alone. Also, keep everybody else's germy little fingers away from it. That means you, and you, and you. Stay away from it until it's completely healed. The only time you really have any contact with the piercing during the healing phase is when you're doing soaks or, or cleaning with saline, cleaning in the shower, and checking the tightness of the balls. Rest of the time, leave it alone. Give it time to heal. You'll have the rest of your life to mess with it. Um, uh, no oral contact or exchanging of bodily fluids on you around the piercing for a minimum of six months. As I mentioned earlier, because it is a piece of metal in a, in a soft in soft tissue, there is a possibility during the healing process of tears, et cetera, that it, or even after the piercing is healed, I should say. During the healing process, yes. And then additionally, giving it that extra three months is going to give it time to strengthen and produce more tissue to the point where it's a little safer. So, it doesn't mean you can't have sex for six months. That just means that you need to use some type of latex barrier. Um, you also want to avoid spermicide, um, any type of warming gels, anything that's active or reactive, um, anything that's flavored, um, spermicide, um, and I suggest water-based lubricants. Um, they're tried and true. I've had people use, use them with no issue. I don't know about silicone. I've been kind of on the fence with it, and I just haven't seen enough real research. So, Water-based, easy, simple. Also, you want to consider that when you're using condoms to find something that's a little bit larger, that fits comfortably over the area, and it's not going to put a lot of pressure on the piercing or piercings because it's not going to feel good. Um, keep your environment clean, clothing, bedding, towels. Uh, it's a good idea to put a clean pair of drawers on every shorts, what have you, wear to bed, put a clean pair on before you go to bed just to be on the safe side. Keep pets away from it. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you. Uh, do not submerge the piercing in bodies of water you can't control the quality of, which means no swimming for at least three months. Um, I don't care what the water is, if it's the most purest thing on the planet, natural spring, there are microorganisms in there that are going to cause an infection. Soaking in that water is just going to probably lead to an infection. So no swimming. Same thing with pools. No swimming. As I said earlier, this piercing will bleed off and on for anywhere from a couple days to five days. So I do suggest wearing a pad for a minimum of a week. Um, do check the tightness of the balls, as I said earlier. 
Uh, lifestyle changes, etc. Sexually, like I've already said, gentle at first. Try to figure out what feels comfortable and what doesn't feel comfortable. If it doesn't feel comfortable, do something back off until it does again. Uh, be careful with your selection of uh, condoms. Avoid anything that's got spermicide on it or anything else. And also kind of try to pick, stay away from ribbed. That's the biggest thing. I, I made that mistake when I was filling out my PA. No, 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 no. Did not feel good. Other things you want to probably consider is if you are active and riding bikes or motorcycles or anything where the area is going to be jostled around a lot, um, running, et cetera, you may want to consider wearing briefs or boxer briefs where it's going to keep the piercing stationary, especially while they're going through that tender phase. Not only is there always that possibility of causing damage to the piercing, which is pretty slim, but there's the problem with the constant jostling around just being damn uncomfortable. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's a good idea before you get this piercing done, if you're with a partner, have a fun weekend, so to speak. Then um, I would suggest uh, kind of doing this before maybe a two to three day weekend where you can spend some time around the house just wearing loose fitting clothing and not really worrying about anything. Uh, give yourself a couple days to recover, um, kind of minimal, minimalize any exercising you're doing or any activities where you might have uh, some discomfort. Just kind of lay about. Catch up on some Netflix stuff or whatever you do for your free time. Or watch some YouTube videos. You're already doing that, aren't you? That pretty much sums up a majority of what I would suggest as far as healing out a diatoid piercing and the pros and cons, advantages, disadvantages. If you feel like I've missed something or you feel like um, I didn't expand on something enough or it's just opened up new questions, please leave a comment. If you have this piercing um, and would like to share your experience with having it, please leave something in the comments. We are trying to kind of build a community here where people can share information and learn from others. That's the whole point of the internet, in my opinion. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you uh, would like to see more content on piercing and tattooing, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you can be notified every single time we post a video. Also, I'm going to ask you to do one final thing. Check out our merch store. We have a number of uh, designs up there, ranging from tattoos, the piercings, the logos, and all kinds of fun stuff, and a couple, of, like one of my favorites. I'm Pierce, but I'm not telling you where. You can pick those up. Um, just click on the link in the description. Um, also, um, if you want additional information, you can check out my website, axiompiercing.com. There's a lot of good information on there. Other than that, have a good day. Enjoy yourself. Hope all your piercings heal with ease and without issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your piercing needs in the future.